Hello guys, welcome back. Now today, we're going to be talking about Nazan Kadri, the hit and the suspension, and more importantly, the hat Toronto Maple Leafs, and if they can adapt with the suspension. Now the NHL player safety announced yesterday that Nazan Kadri would get three games, three suspension games during this Toronto Bruins series, and that's a big, big, giant blow for the Toronto Maple Leafs, as you can tell. That's probably the best time to talk about the hits. I think that three games was really, really on the money. I felt like he would get one to three games, got one to be pretty low. I think that it would be a little bit letting him off the hook there, but I think, I think three is just the right spot for it. It was a dirty hit. I, what he said was that he was going full for the hit, didn't matter what Wingles was on, but Wingles was on the ice, had his head down for like four really full seconds before Kadri came in and smashed him and he definitely three games is deserved it was a boarding it was just a hit to the head it was a really dirty play Kadri is always kind of on edge in the playoffs and he, these kinds of things happen a little bit more regularly than really I think Kadri likes to admit he's one of those players that brings a different edge to the playoffs and sometimes of course that backfires but again I think three is right on the money justified I think that the hit was dirty doesn't really matter about the intent for me I I don't really care about the intent. It's just what happened on the ice. And exactly, I think three games is right on the money. I think that there would be no less and no more. I think three is exactly where it should be. But again, those three games are a huge blow to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, having that second center gone from the lineup for three games, three crucial crucial games after losing the first game is just a major, major blow that they might not come back from. I mean, Kadri is one of the more important players for the Maple Leafs, one of the more underrated players for that team, really, through the stars like Matthews, Riley, and Nylander, and Marner. But again, he's one of the key pieces on that team, and he kind of doesn't get the credit that he deserves offensively, and I think that he will definitely be missed throughout these next three games. Now, it's not to say that Toronto can't win any of them, but it'll definitely be a lot harder for them. Right now, the Leafs lines go as Komarov, Matthews, Nylander for that first line. Komarov on the first line. I don't know what's really going to happen there. Um, the second line, you got Hyman, Marlowe, and Marner. Marlowe in that second spot. He's not a natural center. Again, playing the wing for most of the season for the Leafs. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that goes, how he'll adapt to that, and see if he's a decent replacement for him, if not a good one. And Marlowe has the potential to be a decent center and a good replacement for Kadri, but it'll We'll have to tell how Marlowe will play in that center role. Is he going to be comfortable with that? Then got a third line of J JVR, Bozak, and Brown. Still a good rat line. Then that fourth line of Johnson, Placanic, and Kapanen. Johnson getting that extra spot in the lineup. Then again, Marlowe on that second center position. Is he going to be comfortable taking faceoffs? Again, faceoffs are a huge, important stat in the playoffs. Is he going to be comfortable there? Because the Leafs do need goal scoring and support from that second line, and they really do need that going in the next three games. Of course, with Kadri out, and that's going to be a good big thing will marlo be able to substitute him and will he be able to substitute him well and it's pretty unlikely but that game one country having the three game suspension let's say toronto gets swept country would not have been any other playoff games and it is unlikely but i'm just throwing it out there and again losing game one and having this three game suspension was probably the worst case scenario for the maple leafs i mean now they have an even bigger hurdle to jump through now that they've lost game one and now they've lost their second best center arguably on the team that's just a huge, huge blow. They're going to have to have a lot of hur hurdles jumped over. They're going to have to do a lot of things right and play a lot, lot better than they did in Game 1. Starting with Game 2 tonight, can they get it done? And if they do get it done, that's a huge step forward into getting past the Bruins. Again, the Leafs can especially come back. They can come back at any time. But having this college suspension is going to be huge for them. Will they be able to pass this adversity? Will they be able to get better? And will they be able to improve on a terrible Game 1 performance? And I kind of needed to make some moves after that Game 1 performance. I mean, Kamara, the first line, that's a weird move, but eh, it is what it is. Johnson in on that fourth line might be a spark plug for that lineup. And Marlowe, of course, having to be slotted into that second center position, they could play a lot better in that second game tonight, and it might fuel a good, good game for them. And of course, suspension and the reckless play of Kadri can come up to bite them but it's their destiny and in their control if they want to make this series come back for their side or just let the Bruins stomp all over them. But I still have hope in Toronto they still have a good team even with Kadri out of the lineup 
up. But again, they can't really afford anything against Boston Bruins team, who is looking fantastic in Game 1, and very well could do that again in Game 2 and stop all over them again. And they're going to have to get anything that they can and grasp on to anything they can get to pa get past them. But I still think that they can, they're a good team, and they are able to beat the Bru Boston Bruins, but it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of hard work. And of course, they can't afford any more of these three-game suspensions just being thrown out there. And you see it time after time again with Stanley Cup champions is that their center core provides effort and goal scoring almost every single game and they're able to pitch in all the time I and mean, you see it with the Pittsburgh Penguins in that last stretch the last couple of seasons their center depth was amazing they were chipping in almost every single game but having Nazem Kadri out for three games three crucial games against the Boston Bruins is not going to help them at all and it'll definitely hurt them in the long run it might not the Toronto Maple Leafs couldn't play a little bit better without him Quadri in the lineup but again, it's something, it's not a risk that you really want to take with them. That's a big turning point for this team. Will they be able to get better with the adversity of Codger being out, or will they just stumble and fall with the Boston Bruins? And I think it could go either way, but really, again, the Toronto Maple Leafs do control their destiny, and they decide how far they want to go, and they can definitely catch fire here, and I hope they do, because I am rooting for them in the playoffs, but Codger being out is going to be a hard, hard thing for them to come over. But against Boston Bruins, anything is possible. But for the Maple Leafs, they just got to focus on Game 2. Get it done there. And then Game 3 and Game 4. And it's just the rest from there. Focus on Game 2. Win that game. And then anything is possible. But that's going to, guys. Like and subscribe if you did not ring that bell. Yeah, man. Tell me down below what you thought of the hits on Wingles. And how the Toronto Maple Leafs will perform when his three-game suspension kicks in tonight. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.